Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. A really short one today, five maximum 10 minutes. So yesterday I did a video on Bounce Bud, um, a pretty thorough spoken walkthrough, but there was one thing that I didn't know about that I know know about and want to share with you. And there was another thing that I read about in the manual, but to be honest, the way it was described in the manual, it didn't really sound like a big deal didn't sound that interesting, so I hadn't even bothered checking it out. And then today I checked it out and saw it's actually really cool. Um, so yeah, again, you know, the manual is a little bit um, sparse on details. So I think this video will be very useful. So first, let's have a little listen. And uh, actually, hang on a second. Let me just send that to see. Okay, yeah. I'll just connect it to my mic chain and stuff like that. All right. So um, if we look here at Bounce Bud, uh, you can see it's a little bit different because we have uh, these blocks coming in. So basically, this is using the function described in the manual as shooting walls, right? So what um, actually happens here, let me just make this a little bit smaller. So these blocks are coming in, these are MIDI notes being sent from an external source into the app. So in this case, I'm using another couple of James apps. I'm using two instances of SnakeBud. And um, I've got BrainBud here as well, and I'll explain in a minute how I'm using that. So what is happening here basically is that um, one of the snake buds is sending MIDI notes into one of those walls. And uh, we see that as this. Okay, so basically this MIDI note is being sent into this left wall here. And then other MIDI notes are being sent into the top wall. And what those blocks are doing is they're different from the um, the bubbles, or whatever we want to call them, um, the balls, um, because the balls make sound, right? The, these blocks, the MIDI notes coming in from external MIDI sources, they don't actually make any noise, like you can see when that green one just hit that wall, it didn't actually make any noise. But you see the way that just bounced off that one. So that's what they do, they basically bring in another element of uh, randomness. So let's just wait for another one to come in. And you see how that orange ball has hit it. Now, sometimes we get some really um, interesting, weird stuff. I don't really know if this is supposed to be happening, but sometimes I've seen balls get stuck inside one of these rectangles. Or what can happen is that um, a rectangle can come down and kind of sandwich a ball into a corner. And that can create interesting ratcheting effects and stuff like you see up there. So, you know, reading this in the manual, it's mentioned very casually and you wouldn't have any idea that it's such a cool feature. But it's actually a mad cool feature. And then another thing that is not mentioned in the manual, which absolutely bloody should be, is that um, if you uh, tap uh, on a on a ball, uh, it will change direction. So yeah, one of the things I was surprised at, you know, I kind of thought that you would be able to grab something and flick it like in um, Fluss by Heinbach and Gauss. I still think it's a pity that you can't do that. You know, I, I really see these and I just want to grab them and flick them and have that uh, kind of thing that uh, Flus had with, um, you know, the speed of your flick and the direction of your flick affecting not only the direction, but also the, uh, the speed of the ball. So maybe that's something that could be added, I don't know. But anyway, um, it's still very cool that you can change direction of the balls and that you get that um, shooting walls feature. So as you'll notice, um, and as I mentioned in yesterday's video, 
if you want to get sound out of this, you've got to have your transport running, you've got to have play running. But you'll also notice that um, the balls will stay moving around. But if we're using the shooting walls feature, then um, you won't have any any bars coming in here. Why is that? Because um, these things are not generating any MIDI when a play is not on. So um, uh, yeah, so you see now starting to generate MIDI. So now we're getting those bars coming in. So let's uh, talk about the setup for that. And let's just look at my overall setup here. So here I'm using uh, piano tech vibraphone. Um, I just love piano tech, brilliant. Uh, here I'm using TFX Echo. Mm, I put I posted a tweet today. All of this devs apps are on sale at the moment, and this is only two dollars. This is one of my favorite delays on iOS. It's, in my opinion, the best delay when you just want a totally clean, pristine sounding delay with no kind of saturation, whatever. A lot of people don't um, understand that although this is a, um, a bucket brigade delay, it's not like the, the typical analog bucket brigade delay. It, it produces clean delays. Uh, here I've got magic verb. Okay, you guys are getting very used to seeing that in my videos. And so here we've got um, bounce bud. And uh, remember one thing I mentioned in my video yesterday. By the way, the video yesterday, the giveaway is still open for another um, day. I suppose, and actually, that video was just put out today. Really, um, yeah, feels feels like yesterday. Time zone stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, remember that when we resize this, uh, you know, the ball stayed the same size, but the space gets bigger. And I mentioned in yesterday's video that that's one of the really cool features about this app. So now um, we have these snake buds, okay, feeding into the walls of this. And we have here brain bud, which I'm basically using. Now brain bud is an app that Jim brought out a while ago. And to be honest, I never really got around to using it. This is really actually the first time that I've used it. Um, you know, too many apps. I really don't have time to look at everything. But this is actually insanely useful if you're using a few of James' different apps together. Because what this will do is allow you to uh, synchronize the key and scale that any of his apps are playing at the same time. So let's just first talk a little bit about how to set uh, BrainBot up. Um, so if we go up here and look at the MIDI routing window in AUM and uh, we find BrainBud's output here, okay, right? So all this part is for MIDI output and this part is for MIDI input. So we see here that BrainBud is sending MIDI out to uh, BounceBud, SnakeBud first instance and SnakeBud second instance, right? So there all the Jim Altsai apps that we've got running in this session. And so what I've done here is, um, because I had basically started with a session where the key and scale was C for again. And then um, I just quickly Googled because I mean, I didn't know off the top of my head, what are relative, what are scales and keys that are relative to this. So I got a bunch of those and I just um, set up different patterns here, uh, which is which is very easy to do. Again, just let's say we um, press here, I can just choose copy and then I can go here and I can um, paste that in there and then I can change it if I want. And I can also uh, delete things, right? Okay, so that's how to set up BrainBud. And remember that you've got to be feeding the MIDI from BrainBud into the James Altsai apps that you want to use it to control, okay? And so then uh, if we look here, um, so we've got these two instances of SnakeBud and their MIDI is being routed into BounceBud. 
Now, if we go to bounce bud, um, so to do this, we have to go to uh, settings. So remember, in bounce bud, we have four different walls, right? Top, bottom, left, and right. And you can configure those um, in such a way that you set up their uh, MIDI out channels and their MIDI in channels, right? So if we look here, um, let's let's look at it. Let's look at Snakebud first. So here, this instance of Snakebud, if I want this to send MIDI in to um, BounceBud, and I want to send that MIDI to a specific wall, I need to make sure of one thing. I need to make sure that the MIDI out channel that this is sending on, so here it's set this one sending on channel two. Okay, so that's this instance. That's this one. So that one's sending on channel two. And then this one here, pressed on settings again there. Um, so this one, MIDI out channel three. Now don't get the MIDI out channel and MIDI CC out channels mixed up, right? Because they're you know, different things. This one is for sending notes. This one is for sending CC messages. Okay, so basically what we need to do now is we need to make sure in BounceBud that things are set up so that we're receiving MIDI on those channels two and three. Now, I could send MIDI in from every side, but I thought it'd be enough just to send in uh, to two walls. So um, top here is receiving uh, MIDI on channel one. So that's not getting anything. Oh no, hang on, sorry, wait a second. Actually, I have, that's for, um, that's for the MIDI CCs, actually, sorry, yeah. So I've got to look down here, yeah. So um, MIDI in channel, if we see here, this right channel is currently receiving on four, so that's not gonna be affected. This left channel is receiving on three. The bottom channel is receiving on one and the top channel is receiving on two. So basically here, the way we've got it set up, we're going to be getting those blocks coming in from the top side and the left side and nothing coming from the bottom and the right. So let's just press uh, play. Okay, so you see there coming in from the left side and they're coming in from the top side. Okay, um, so yeah, this is basically how you set that up and it's really cool. So now let's just look at um, the brain bud thing. So pay attention to these uh, keys and scales that will change. And um, I'll just leave bounce buds um, settings open and hopefully when I change things here, you'll see those changing immediately there. Okay, now it has actually changed, but it just doesn't show you it in real time there. See if I open it up again, you see now it's changed to A flat major. But you see, it's also, why it's useful to use BrainBot is because if I just change this in bounce bud itself, but I was still sending in uh, MIDI from these, these could be sending in different notes and those notes that they're sending might not be in that particular motor scale that I'm using, right? In bounce bud. So that's why it's really useful to have this brain bud as a kind of master controller. Now, one thing you'll notice Mm, I don't know if there's a good reason for this, but you can see that basically every time that I change a uh, key or scale, that all the balls get reset. They start firing out again from the middle. And so that, I mean, that can be cool, um, especially if we size things 
so that this square space that the balls are moving in is large. Uh, then every time we do this, it's basically like putting in a rest. And then we got to wait for the balls to start hitting walls again before we get sound. But if we make the space very small, then that time will be much shorter. So you see here, by the way, how the notes on the wall are changing. So if you didn't watch my video on um, BounceBot yesterday, I'd strongly recommend watching it. This is a cool app. I will say one thing. Uh, earlier today, I was having a fair bit of crashing with this when I was sending in uh, MIDI into it using the shoot walls function. It's been okay again recently, but um, yeah, I don't know what's causing that. But anyway, I'm sure that well, I don't make guarantees for devs, but I hope that um, that will get fixed because it was a bit annoying, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I don't know, um, maybe the MIDI I was sending in was too much for it to handle, but I mean, it was just MIDI. I don't know. I, I'm not aware of any sort of limits that the app has. I mean, let's just see if I bring up um, the rate here. So you see, now we're getting, look, see, yeah. It, so it basically can't handle um, a lot of MIDI input. So I'm not sure if that is something that uh, can be fixed or not. But um, for now, in its current state, I would strongly recommend that if you have some um, setup that you like in the app, save it before you start uh, massively increasing the amount of MIDI um, going in, because uh, if you don't, then you're very likely to start getting the app just crashing on you. At least that's, that's my experience. So safer to, um, for now anyway, stick with lower rates of MIDI generation in an app like Snakebot or whatever it is that you're using to feed MIDI to BrainBot. Okay, everyone, uh, if you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please remember everybody that I make very, very little from YouTube. Um, if you want to support the channel, really the best way is to make a buy me a coffee donation or a PayPal donation from time to time. If you do, I will message you. And uh, another great way to support the channel, of course, is for devs to make donations. They get a lot of value from the channel uh, or to make sponsored videos. So, yeah. But of course, if you don't have the financial means, even just a thumbs up and a comment is great as well. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching and see you soon. Happy playing around with your apps. Wow, we've had a lot of new app releases recently. Okay, take it, take it easy, take care, see you soon.